Right, hello and welcome to episode three of the My Favourite Game podcast. Forgive me for sounding very hoarse, and my guest as well, probably <laughs> feeling very hoarse. <laughs> We've just been away all weekend uh, to Bristol for a stag weekend. We've had a lovely time, haven't we, Billy? Oh yes, it was amazing. Yes, it was indeed. We had a very, very, a lot of fun. Uh, so anyway, first question to all my guests is, who do you support, Billy, and why do you support them? What's your story there? Uh, I support the greatest team, unfortunately for you, <laughs> uh, Chelsea Football Club. And it's mainly down to the fact that my father supported them. And growing up in West Wales, uh, there wasn't, other than Swansea and Cardiff, there wasn't many football teams for us to follow. So I just yeah. latched onto my father's team. So what, what's the reason behind him following Chelsea then? <coughs> so we're he grew up in <laughs> yeah. Burnley, didn't he? So he, yeah, which is even makes it even stranger. So growing up in Burnley, a lot of his friends, well, not his friends, a lot of people around there supported Manchester United and Liverpool as well as um, Burnley. And mm. but I think from what I have, he's told me over the years that his group of friends or the group of friends he made, whether it was from football or whatever, mm. travel down to London to watch um, Chelsea play. So he just went with them. As that's basically it. And yeah. That was so that. Because they weren't particularly successful, were they, at that period? No, not when my dad started. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, which yeah, which was why I, when he was telling me, oh yeah, this is why. And you're, you're, like, <laughs> could you not have picked a better team? Yeah, please. But I suppose you've been lucky only really in the last fifteen years or so. But we'll come to that in a minute because the reason that I've asked you on Billy for my podcast is because of your last year that you've had travelling around uh, South America mm-hmm. and you've been to a few football matches, which we'll come to in a minute. But f- mainly, I just want to talk about your. The trip itself. So, why did you choose to go to South America first? What attracted you to? Um, so, two years. Was it two years ago? Yeah, two years ago, I went to North America to work, mm. and whilst I was there, I met some um, lovely people who were planning to go travelling afterwards, and um, they had actually, and some people who just travelled, and a couple of the boys there had just been on a similar trip to what I eventually went on. So I was yeah. like, and speaking to them, they were like, da 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 da. And then uh, one of the guys working there also worked in Colombia and they were just raving about it. And they're like, go, just go and do it, go and do it. Yeah. But um, originally I was gonna meant to move out to the big USA mm. to become a soccer coach. Yeah. Um, but uh, due to unfortunate reasons with the visas, everyone's visas being delayed. Donald Trump. Not to do with any tangerine man <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, it kept getting pushed back and back and back. So I originally was gonna do the trip, the South American trip after working in the States for nine months. But then when that sort of fell through, I was like, I'll just go and do it now. Yeah. And went and did it then. So where, where did you start your trip then? I flew from London, Stansted, which was bizarre because you can't really normally fly anywhere other than to Europe. Yeah, yeah. Um, to Orlando, then Orlando down to Bogota in Colombia, which is where I started, and then headed north and did almost like a circle in Colombia, and then headed almost in a C shape down round to yeah. Rio. Nice. So, uh, talk me, th- talk me through some of the highlights then of your <laughs> of your trip. Um, so, um, it's basically one in every, other than, like as you mentioned, other than the football, if I take, we'll take that yeah, out. Yeah, for now. For now. Uh, this, you could probably say one in every country, so in Colombia, um, in Colombia, in Medellin, I went paintballing in Pablo Escobar's house. Nice. That was an experience and a half. <laughs> and then, uh, Ecuador was the Galapagos Islands, which is famous for where I think Dar- it was where Darwin yeah. and the evolution. Is there a lot of stuff about Darwin there? Yeah, there's the, the, uh, one of the. There's a lot of um, um, like they've got. Uh, I think it's is it turtles. I think the turtle, yeah. giant turtle. Oh, is it giant tortoises? One of the two. I can mm. never get it right. Um, 
a lot of their like sanctuaries are named after Darwin. Right. So there's a lot of that sort of thing. Oh, there's like Darwin Island and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, so there is he is you know well known that well yeah. there's a lot of things named after him there. I suppose that is why people go there. I, I, oh yeah. Nobody would have heard of it had Darwin come somewhere. Oh no, else. and the what is you know like I. It's like snorkeling and scuba diving. I've always done that on family holidays. So yeah. it was. I was when I left the UK. I was like, this is because it is expensive to do that. They, they were. They, they was like, right. If I'm going to do one expensive part of this, you know, one splurge, yeah. that was going to be the one. Because most it's Galapagos or Patagonia. Right. I was fortunate, obviously, to do both. Yeah. That was another highlight. Highlight road trip through Patagonia. Yeah. Uh, Machu Picchu in Peru. Uh, working in the Amazon jungle in Bolivia, mm. um, and then oh, hang gliding in Brazil, but learning how to ride a bike. Well, you never, never learn how to ride a bike, Thomas. No, really? No, no, never. Well, growing up, again, okay, growing up in West Wales, you did have bikes there. Didn't there you? was bikes <laughs> there, but I learned to ride a horse <laughs> <laughs> rather than learn to ride a bike. <laughs> Because um, obviously it's one or the other in uh, <laughs> uh, in West Wales. Yeah. No, so, no. I I generally don't know why I never learned how to ride a bike, but yeah. it was just one of these. None of none of us really have of my brothers and sister. That's so weird. Um, I, I think my brothers have learned more so now, whereas me and my sister never really had a bike. Yeah. Didn't um, you? Wasn't it called like the Road of Death or something? Yeah, oh, Death Road. So yeah. You just learnt to cycle, and then you went on the Road of that Death. That was the so I, the first time I rode a bike in like I or, like when you go around friends' house, they were like, "Oh, go on this bike." And I remember um, what put me off was in primary school. My, one of my friends bought a bike into school, and I had an unfortunate accident where I fell off the seat mm. and landed. Uh, that like that comical land where you you know your oh. legs over the handlebars. I landed oh. on the on the handlebars and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that again. Um, so the first time I rode a bike in 15 years was in Bogota through the city centre on a bike tour, and then the sec- second time was down a mountain in Ecuador, and then that was the third time wow. was down this death road. But- <laughs> But they all they all joked about the everyone with, like the friends I'd made along the trip. They were like asking the guides, "He needs stabilizers. Are you able to provide them?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. For death road, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing you haven't mentioned, I don't think yet, is that you went on this trip by yourself. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, because I imagine, oh, well, there might be people listening who are considering going travelling, but perhaps they haven't got the friends, or they or they can't organise it between them. Mm-hmm. So. Or they might be nervous about going by themselves. So, what encouragement would you would you give to in it. that respect? Yeah, just go, just go, you can do it. Uh, you know, it, you know. As I'm not sure many of your listeners know, but obviously you're a teacher, and they know that, and I'm a teacher as well. Well, what? Well, I was you a teacher. Don't put yourself down. I still, down, I still, still am. I still am. <laughs> I still am. Yes. Um, and our two other close friends are teachers as well. So, one of you boys convincing one of you boys to come along with me would have been taken a massive especially Simon obviously with him being yeah. with his kid as well it would have taken a massive thing and then you know a boy people I met whilst in America and stuff you know I'd ask them and they were like oh you know other commitments and stuff so in the end I was just it was one of those things where I was like I'll just go what else I thought you know after this America because I was meant to leave to work in the States in March April yeah. and it was August by the time I actually flew out and did this other South America trip, so I was just twitch, sat there twiddling my thumbs, thinking, right, se- September's coming around again. Am I going to stay at home another year and work as a and try and find a permanent job, or am I going to go off and do the trip that I was originally going to do in November because that was when the contract would have ended? Mm. So I was just right. I think it was. I don't because as well my the visa. Because the visa was a uh, North America visa was being delayed, I didn't have my passport. They'd kept hold of my passport, um, so I was waiting on that to come back and waiting and waiting and waiting. So I couldn't as though just go. So I remember booking the flight the day I got my passport back, booking it for two weeks later. I remember, the, yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was just it was a quick. Um, as we were joking whilst we were on this in Bristol, I had about seventeen leaving dues in the space of. Yeah two months um, 
it was one of those things I was just like, yeah, I'm just going and through caution to the wind. Yeah. But um, you made friends everywhere. Oh yeah, you know, it was uh, people, you know, people, <coughs> I know, uh, you know, boys, uh, you know, uh, people, when you go, if you're a solo traveller, one of the questions people were saying was, oh, but you're a boy, you know, you'll be, you'll be fine if you're on your own. And girl, you know, I think girls find it, seem to find it more worrying. Yeah they'll turn around and go, oh, I can't go on my own. Whereas I, there was a lot of female solo travellers as well, so even if you're, if you're male or female, yeah. you, you can definitely go off and meet tons of, of tons of people. I met people who've been travelling for you know six months and they've met people and travelled the whole of their, they met on the first day and travelled the whole trip yeah. together. And um, you said you found, because there's two ways of going around South America. Yeah, typically there are, they, they call them the gringo route, the gringo trail. Yeah. So Colombia, like I said earlier, is this like a circle? So you can go. It's you know you either go clockwise or anti-clockwise um, from like Bogota or like Cartagena, which is on the coast. You can go, there's, typically you go that way or that. But once you get to Ecuador and come down, it's either you, you're literally going either north. You're yeah. asking you're going. The three questions are where are you from, what did you do back home, and are you going north or are you going south? Yeah. So yeah, you meet you bump into the same. People. In fact, one of the boys I did the Patagonia road trip with, uh, we'd seen each other in a hostel in La Paz in Bolivia, not spoken, yeah. but then got to, went to the, me and my friends went to the, uh, Stuart, we went to the jungle for a, a, six, uh, a month yeah. and then came back and he'd gone on and we then saw him in Sucre and decided we were going to go off on this wild adventure and hire a camper van and drive for 350 miles a day which I'm sure you know <laughs> just to Lovely. just do it Lovely. Yeah. right then to come to football then you went to quite a few games didn't you across various different so uh, places. In, in so I was out for eight months nine countries in eight months and originally when I left uh, I was like, right, I'm not. I, I thought I'm going to struggle to watch uh, any football. As strange as it sounds, it is massive football yeah. over there. But I thought I'm not going to. Um, it wasn't your priority. But it wasn't going to be my priority. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to turn around and go right. I'm going to stay in and watch Chelsea yeah. play this weekend. In yeah. fact, the day I landed, or the day after, the, I landed the night before. The day I landed was the first game of the season, where Burnley beat Chelsea. Yeah. I think it was. Was it 2-1? 3-2, I think it was. Yeah. They were 3-0 up and then, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember, you know, I mean, in our art, because in the hostel I was on, I knew it was on. I was like, ooh, and it was in the morning. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I could stay. And I was, let, I was like, no, I'm going. Yeah. And, and I was so glad I didn't stay because it would have been a very upsetting <laughs> moment to start my trip, me yeah. cursing at the telly. So in terms of, like, English football and the coverage of English football over there, how does it... It's from no, they right. get the um, the coverage. It's oh, it's, they use the American all the games. Fox. They, they use yeah. Fox, and because of the the reason we we don't, don't get to see every game live is because of the ban of like from three o'clock yeah. to five o'clock yeah. uh, over here to make sure fans go to the games. Whereas obviously in America they're not going to have that ban, so yeah. they can show them and then it, they just get them whether it's legally or illegally yeah. onto the. Um, but they're not shown until they don't have in South America they don't have the massive build up we have right. they do in the States but not in America uh, in South America they just put it on five minutes before right. the game picks off what what teams are big then in South America it, you'll typically find whichever so for example uh, in Chile <laughs> Chile it was um, Arsenal whilst I was I was there when, when Suarez moved sorry, Suarez Sanchez moved from Arsenal to United and you saw the switch so oh. when I was there it was Arsenal but then Man United then was the shirts were coming out then yeah. so you were seeing people with so it's whichever team their big star plays for yeah. so Brazil it, you know Neymar is now at PSG so there was a few PSG shirts but Chelsea were popular there because of William and what was it like in Argentina because they they're not massive fans of Messi are they really because they feel no. like he uh, left. Left, left them too early um, yeah, so I went to the I went to Rosario, where he, um, Messi began. I know he ended up at Barcelona to have his because yeah. of his treatment, but the club where he began knew um, 
I think it's Newell Old Boys. Yeah. Um, went to their grounds. I didn't go watch them play, but I went to their grounds and, and stuff like that. And there's no like statue. If anywhere there's going to be a statue, yeah. you'd think it'd be there. But there's other than a banner with his face on it in an Argentine shirt. There's nothing. Yeah. Really, for you know, Maradona's. Yeah. You know, loved and adored. Um, I went to see his. Um, the te- I think it's his team, Ar- Argentinos Juniors, and I saw Boca as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I saw. Yeah, he's not massive. No, he isn't. No. To be fair. So uh, what? Uh, so you said you seen Boca there, but that wasn't at. Ben that was Kramer, at. Was that was away. So, um, so yeah, I saw nine in, of the nine countries. Le- when I landed back in Colombia. Yeah. Uh, I met friends and they were like, oh, we're going to the Medellin derby. Yeah. Um, you should come, you know, they, they were too... It's easy to get tickets. It's easy to get, to, literally, I went up, I, so we got, I got to Medellin and went up to the stand, the stand, the stadium, and yeah. went, um, I want eight no <laughs> tickets way. for the uh, Medellin game. And they were like, yeah, uh, here you are. And it was the cost, the same price, eight tickets was the same price as one. What? Premier League ticket, so I was just there like, oh, I'll have three hundred there. <laughs> no, yeah, so um, eight of us went, and it were, and I went with two two Celtic fans, two girls who were Celtic fans, and they said it was crazier than the football was terrible. Yeah, but the atmosphere was they were bouncing on banisters. They were, in fact, one I know one fan fell oh, off the banister, and the uh, golf cart. For the you know the, the drinks or something. Oh, something. No, not the drinks. The physio. Physio. The yeah. physio golf cart came across the pitch, and we were like, "Well, there's no player injured," <laughs> and it was because a fan had fallen, and they then had to take them to the ambulance and stuff. Oh, so, wow. um, so well, yeah. What are the grounds like there? Are they pretty? I mean, I suppose they're all open plan. The majority of them. I think everyone, every ground I went to, other than the one in Brazil, hmm. none of them had a roof. I was going to say, lots of them haven't hosted any sort of. No. World Cup for a long time, bar Brazil, uh, like Mexico was in the 70s, yeah. they, and uh, Argentina in the 70s as yeah. well, but since then there hasn't been any major No, 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 so, and I went to Uruguay where the first one yeah. was, and that was all open band. <laughs> Fortunately, during the stadium tour, I realised that there was a Phil Collins concert on, <laughs> and so in the middle of the picture you get this ma- amazing panoramic view of the whole city there. Yeah. But then I, and obviously at the stadium, but then I had this massive stage set up in the middle. So I couldn't, like, it was just, ah, oh, I'm at this world famous football stadium with a pitch inside it, uh, with a stand inside it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, um, they're, they're all similar, similar to like the, almost like the new Camp, you know, how that sort of. Yeah, bowl. That, like yeah, that was bowl um, start, style of pitch. Um, and yeah, and they would, yeah, but they, they were bouncing. And <laughs> typically they caged off. If the away fans were allowed in, they were in a so some some in some countries the away fans weren't allowed to travel. So it was just the home fans at the stadium. So that impacted the atmosphere a bit. Mm. But if the away fans were there, it was typically they were in a, in a cage. <laughs> they caged them in right. to stop them from causing trouble or getting you know attacked by the home fans or whatever. So yeah. So was was there any particular country that was better for? Atmosphere. Oh, but, um, atmosphere. Um, Chile. The Chile game I went to. They were the team at Colo Colo who I went to see. I remember it because the away team scored, and you couldn't hear the away team celebrate. The fans of the away team celebrate because the home fans started singing louder <laughs> because the the home fans started singing louder because the away team had scored. Whereas typically in England yes. or in Britain or if yeah. the home fan if you're the away team the home tap fans go quiet yeah. or they're jeering and whatever um, so they were probably one of the you know better atmospheres but footballing wise Brazil Palmeiras they were the mm. best team by a long way uh, because Boca got battered by some minnows when I went to watch them mm. but they were playing um, River Plate the week after yeah. so I think they'd rest I don't think Tevez played, uh, they, they rested a lot of their big right. stars in preparation, I think, for the following week. Because yeah. they were, um, Boca were running away with the league. Um, 
so they were just like, oh, we'll just rest all these players because we've got a massive game the week after. So yeah. yeah. Well, you explained to me as well. Uh, that's called the Super Classico, isn't it? Those two. Yeah. And it's, you can't just turn up and go to that game, can you? You can't. Uh, so it's in very in Argentina, uh, uh, Argentina were the only was the only country where I struggled to get tickets because you can only members similar to how we have it here mm. in Britain only members are able to go to the games yeah. so you have to go through a tour company which brought the price up like 10 times the price yeah. for tourists to go to the games um, so it was hard yeah so to go to that game would be even more difficult because it was just a, it's such a high profile game I bet the tickets sell out yeah. ridiculously like I think I paid Eighty pounds, I thought sixty pounds for I think it was eighty dollars, sixty pounds for that gate ticket. Whereas, like I said earlier, the in game I could buy eight tickets for that price yeah. in Colombia, yeah. and it was similar. It was like a fiver was the price really for the rest of um, South America. Brazil was I think twenty pounds because that way I went to the Champions League equivalent, yeah. the Copa de Libertadores yeah. for that game. Um, so yeah, other than Argentina, it was pretty easy. But yeah, they were. If you because I know that's on your to do list, yeah, but well, it's something I would like to do, but it looks extremely scary and intimidating, yeah, even, even just for a neutral. So, yeah, um, in Brazil, so when I was in Brazil, I'd by this point I'd been to games in every other uh, the rest of the countries and I'd gone to a couple on my own and I met uh, in the hostel for Brazil. There was all the gate, I went to the Palmeiras against Lima, which is the a team from Peru in their game but then there was also the uh, Rio de Janeiro cup final where the two Rio teams had got to this they've got to the final and it was being held in the um, national stadium yeah. um, and fact people wanted to go to that because it was a massive massive game and they were all afraid they all went through the hostel again paying 10 times the price because they've been told oh you can't go on your own you can't go on your own you can't go on your own and then a police woman came up to me and was like she works for, like she goes to West Ham games and, mm. and all this stuff she's from London and she was like well I'm I, I think I'll be fine um, but they've all told me not to go and I was like well I'm gonna go on my own mm. and I then unfortunately I couldn't go to that game because I that was out of the nine games that I'd been to previously I hadn't been conned out of a fake ticket and that was the one I wasn't too I wasn't too annoyed because I'd managed to by that point been to one in mm. every game every game every country, every country yeah. um, and I was like oh this will be just another one to go to um, something to do and in the end I didn't go but yeah. but yeah people it was I was fine as long as you know as long as you don't act like a idiot yeah um, and you know, like we we do are renowned the Brits for being hooligans. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as long as you aren't an idiot, like I said, you'll be you'll, you'll, be, you'll be fine and keep yeah. your wits about you. You know, people said don't take any valuables and stuff with you. So, yeah. You know, as long as you haven't got your iPhone out taking three hundred photos and yeah. selfies and stuff, you're, yeah, yeah, I was fine. Okay, and I just want to finish off now because we're nearly at the train station, Billy. Yeah. So. I can't do the quiz off the top of my head, so I'll just briefly, we've got three minutes until we get the, to yeah. the train station, just to talk about uh, your favourite game then, which was oh. what you told me, your first ever time watching Chelsea in the semi-final of the Champions League 2007. Carling Cup. Right? Carling, 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 Carling Cup. Carling Cup. Oh, sorry. Carling, Carling Cup. Carling yeah. Cup. Yeah, Carling Cup. We went, uh, so it was, I can't remember what birthday it was off the top of my head, um, but yeah, um, my parents had bought me a my first no it wasn't my first Chelsea but they bought me they bought me they, the first time they'd ever bought me a Chelsea shirt with uh, Roach 22 on the back after my mm. hero Ida Johnson and they, uh, that was I was over the moon with that and then they went well you're going to need it tonight because we bought you uh, tickets to go and watch Chelsea against Manchester United at Old Trafford awesome. um, which we won 2-1 thanks to Damien Duff scoring this Free, free kick, I think it what they you know, say. Mm. Well, you know, he loved it. From where I was standing, it was the best thing I'd ever seen. Um, but yeah, it was. I remember going with me, my dad, and my sister, and just going absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, it was. I think because we went on to win it. That was Mourinho's. It was Mourinho's first year. Um, so it was 
his that was his first trophy and then we went on to win the league that year as well but that was his first trophy yeah. um, so obviously we're all bouncing because we're I think I think at that point were we still in the FA Cup as well so everyone was talking about the quadruple and mm. <laughs> actually that never happened yeah. but um, but yeah that was I my favourite game. Unfortunately, Good Johnson didn't play for very oh. long, <laughs> so that was the disappointing thing. Oh, about at least it. he did play then. Oh, he came on as a sub. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Right. So your the quiz then is: Can you name? Well, there's you could either do it so it's out of eleven or it's out of twenty-two. But you need to try and name the two elevens that started oh, that, that game. started that game. So just let me, give me a minute. Let me just get the picture up uh, because otherwise. So I'll just give you a minute to think. Are you going to tell me yes and no, as I name them? Um, we could do. We could play really hard and say if you get one wrong, that's it. They're all wrong. Oh, what gone? I'll tell you. I, I'll, I, yeah, right. Go on. I'll try. Go on. So, start, so with, start with Chelsea. Yeah. Lampard. Yeah. Makaleli. Yeah. Duff. Uh, yeah. Uh, Drogba. Y- yes. Johnson came on. I know that. Yeah. Terry, yeah. Had to give Carvalho play. No. For, Ferreira was right back, was he? Ferreira was yeah, yeah. And then Bridge. Yeah. Did Gallas play centre back then? Yeah. Now did Czech, Czech play or could Czech, Czech, Czech played. How many is that? Ten. You got nine. To nine. So there's another striker and then another the other winger, Robin. Yeah. And. We had moved move, move to gone by that point. Yeah, not moved to. Kesman? No. Crespo? No. Is it a striker? Um, not Joe Cole? I th- no. I don't think it's a striker. Jaroszek? No. <laughs> I'm just naming <laughs> random players now. Cause I can't remember this player at all. Uh, it looks, it'd probably be a winger, I think, looking at the other players. Jeremy? No. I don't know. It says Tiago. Oh, Tiago, yeah, he was Portuguese. He, I remember him scoring an absolute screen against United, I think the following year, um, in a 3-1 win. Yeah, Tiago, he, was, he, went, he played for Atletico Madrid now. Does he? Yeah, he went back. I think we signed him from there, and then he went back. All right. Um, I, don't, I don't remember him. As well. he was only, I think he was only there a season, and then, or two seasons, and then left the following year, because mm. uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't getting in, because we had Lampard, Makaleli. I think we got S, I think it was the year we got Essie in then. Yeah. And he was like, I'm off. I'm out of That's not bad, Billy. 10 out of 11. Yeah. Do you want to have a go at the United team as well? Uh, Howard. Yeah. Neville. Rooney came on, I think. Uh, yeah, he did, yeah. Uh, Saha. Uh, yeah. No, uh, Ferdinand. Yeah. Brown. Uh, no, no, he was no. not an unused sub. Keen. Keen. Giggs. Yeah. Who was our other striker? Was Van Nistelrooy there? No, he may have been. He no, wasn't playing. No. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think of other. I think classic United midfield. Um, yeah, that's. Oh, but. No. Beckham. No. Centre mid pairing. Keane and. Oh, no, I nearly said Vieira then. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, who do they have? Skulls. Yes. <laughs> Uh, who was ever the? Who was on the other wing then? Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Uh, Sylvester. No, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. No, he, was, he played it. That's two more, yeah. I got fullback and a striker. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you got yeah another defender, a winger. A winger. Winger. So yeah, yeah they had Giggs and Ronaldo playing. And another winger. Oh, uh, winger or I don't know. Maybe you'll be able to tell me. That's a, I would have said he was a wide midfielder, but I could be wrong. Oh, I don't know now. Oh. And then there was it's a full is so they had we, it was Brown, wasn't it? Where's Brown? Where's Brown? He was a very good defender. This player. Ever? No, he didn't play for long at United. He was very good. Didn't play for long at United. I don't know. Heinze. Oh yeah, Gabriel Heinze. Heinze. Yeah, Heinze. Yeah. Um, I don't know. The other one, Quentin Fortune. Oh yeah, I know. Was he? Is he a winger? 
I can't I, he's more. I think he's like typically <clears throat> now he'd pl probably play in the you know like the, well for the hazards that forward three like Pedro. Sam. Pedro. He's probably similar to a Pedro role. Yeah. Oh, um, very good, Billy. So what was that? He only got th missed three out of twenty-two. Oh, that's, that's very good. Well done, Billy. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming on. Thank it's you. Been a pleasure. A nice and round half an hour as well. Perfect, Perfect timing. Well done.